Hey everybody, um, I just uh, want to take a minute and share with you a few thoughts uh, that's been going through my head this week. I would, I'm going to call it Bubbles, and uh, this is episode one. I hope it has some value to you. If not, you can just shut it off and you don't have to worry about it, and I won't know any different. Um, but uh, this week we've been talking a lot about love. Uh, we're going to talk about love a lot more in First John. And uh, we found last Sunday that it's known through the example of Jesus Christ. That is the greatest picture of love that we could ever have, that he would lay down his life for us. We also saw that it's the evidence of our connection with Christ and, and the fact that we would love our brothers, uh, love one another, uh, is a testament to Christ uh, being in, in us and having changed and transformed our lives. We also learned that the less we abide, the less we love. So that, that uh, statement that less is more is not true in the, um, in the Christian world. The more of Christ we have, the more we are capable of loving. We also learn that love takes sacrifice. And uh, that's really what started this thought process for me today. And, and it came from what, if love is sacrifice, and love is um, what First Corinthians tells us, then what is love? What does it look like? What does it mean for us? And so just a reminder that uh, in 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8, there is a definition of love. And I started to think about this and go, love is patient. And I didn't even really get beyond that word because I started to think about what does that mean? What does it mean to be patient? And why is being patient such a sacrifice for us? And so, um, just to clarify, when it says love is patient, is not meaning that uh, we're going to need medical attention ourselves. Um, although we do need uh, a continued heart transformation by Christ, it is not a physical thing that is going on. Uh, the word patient really has everything to do with waiting. And uh, the Bible, the biblical definition, if you were to look down through and mind that, which I would really recommend you like going into scriptures and saying, where does it talk about being patient? It, it refers to being slow and long-suffering, uh, enduring, delaying, being steadfast, waiting. These are all words that are used to translate the idea of being patient in the scriptures. And so it just has this concept of waiting. And we can really understand that right now. Like we are living in a space where we're waiting for things to happen that we have no control over. And it probably is starting to push into this concept of patience. You may even find yourself becoming impatient in certain areas. And uh, I, because I know I myself have struggled with this over the last week even. And I know that we've got a few more weeks for sure that we're going to be dealing with this. Um, so what is patience? Well, believe it or not, I found the the as I was reading through the scriptures and thinking through that and how to illustrate this for everybody, I found a Sesame Street video that like made the light bulb go on for me. And it was a video with Elmo and Zac Efron talking about patience. And if you can imagine, Elmo was wanting to go play a game with Zac. And he was like, please, 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 please come go with me. Go, let's go, let's go, let's go play. And Zac was trying to teach the lesson on, on the screen and, and he talked about that. And it was like, um, suddenly I understood patience at a whole new level. Now, it's silly that it took Sesame Street for me to do that. And in fact, the video doesn't do as great a job as what I hope um, the, the scriptures would do for us in that. But it, it dawned on me. And uh, what it dawned on me is that uh, there are two sides to patience. Uh, the first is this idea of having patience. And that was where Elmo, that was the lesson for Elmo. You need to have patience, Elmo. We're going to go outside and play when the time is right and all of that kind of stuff. And we fully grasp that. If you're a parent, you know, we tell your kids to be patient all the time. And uh, we are told to be patient and to wait. And so that that's one side of it. But then what I noticed in the video that really that drew my attention was this idea of showing patience. So... As Elmo is begging and pleading to go outside, Zac Efron's character is being very calm and, uh, and is speaking gently with him and, and helping him to uh, navigate this, this uh, desire that Elmo has. And I thought, wow, that's 
a picture of patience as well. It's actually a part of what's very difficult for me when I'm when I'm uh, being pressed into by someone who's being impatient. I don't always have the greatest amount of patience. And I thought those two sides are important and they take sacrifice from both sides. So let's just explore those. Biblically, here is one side, having patience. The people of Israel were uh, experiencing turmoil and strife in their lives. Uh, they were dealing with a king who was awful. And, uh, and God reminds them through the prophet Isaiah that, that they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall not run and be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. And he's just, he's really encouraging them to do what's right, but to wait, to wait upon God and to watch what God would do. And, uh, and really that admonition to believers is true all the way to this day. Um, we are encouraged to continue to wait upon God and his return to bring his Christ would come back and bring order to this world. Those are things that we have to wait for. And when we need to wait for um, God's provision in our lives and not try to take things into our own hands, that's the having patience part of it. And it's a struggle, no question, because we want to do things in our own timing and we want to provide for ourselves or we think we can and so um, or we think we know what's best. But God is really calling us as people that uh, to love him the most it requires us to be patient. But then there's also the flip side of that, of showing patience. And again, God illustrates that for us in his own character. Multiple times in the Old Testament, it says, The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. And many times that statement is made about God in a space where we don't, the people don't really deserve that kind of um, that kind of experience from God, and so God is an ultimate example of being patient. He has continued to be patient. In fact, if you were to read Second Peter chapter three, you would read about the patience of God, prolonging and waiting for the end times. We might be like God, bring your bring Christ now, and we're reminded that. As we patiently wait and endure, he's patiently enduring as well, showing patience so that many could become redeemed, so many could be saved. And so uh, what we want isn't always uh, connected with what God is doing, but he shows us great patience in, in our um, lack of patience. And that's just those are practical things that we could be thinking about as we engage in our days. So give me a couple of different things. Having patience means waiting. It just means like not for not pushing into things that maybe we shouldn't be pushing ourselves into. That doesn't mean we're not active. It just means waiting. Um, it means enduring. It means when we talk about enduring, it means that uh, we we're not giving up. We're not giving up hope. We are, we are enduring the process, knowing that God has something on the other end for us. Long-suffering, that word is used oftentimes in exchange for patience in the word, in the scriptures. And that should give us a great clue as to what patience is. Long-suffering. Now, I'm not talking about like, like that intense suffering, but just that idea that I'm having to put off what I want. And that creates suffering in my life. So if you were to read... Romans chapter 8, you would see that picture and that tension that goes on. It means trusting in God's timing. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. And when I think about this, the idea of having patience, it means I need to really trust that God's timing is perfect for all things, everything, and that what is in my life and what is around me is part of His transformation of my life and helping me to be refined and be more like Christ. But then the flip side is showing patience. And showing patience means being slow to anger and abounding in love. And this is where sacrifice really kind of starts to lay in. I mean, I talk about denying myself and having patience and saying I, what I want right now can wait. But on the other side, it's like 
I'm having to sacrifice my own um, my own understanding of what's what um, you should be doing and say to you, I'm going to love you enough to be patient with you. I'm going to be slow to anger. I'm going to abound in love, abound in love, me overflowing in love, so much love that um, that there's nothing, there's no room left for anything else, and it's just spilling over on other people. And so that this picture of pay, showing patience is is this idea that that it's just overflowing to people. It's slow to speak. Uh, you look in James chapter one; it talks about being slow to speak and quick to listen. And so that, that idea of giving good patience and showing patience is I care more about that person than I care about the way that I feel at the moment. I want to know what you have to say. And these are difficult things. This is part of that sacrifice, the denial of self that's involved in loving other people. It means having compassion. Having compassion means that I'm really wanting to put myself in their shoes. Um, the... Uh, that idea of walking around in somebody else's shoes for a little bit, putting myself in their space and understanding what it is that they're going through, um, that's showing patience and helping us not to worry about how important our thing is at the moment that's, uh, that, that seems to be conflicted with others, but uh, to care for them in the process. But it also means timely wisdom. Showing patience mean, doesn't mean you just ignore the... Uh, the impatience of somebody else or the or the foolish actions of somebody else but it does mean providing timely wisdom not timely opinion but timely wisdom timely wisdom would be the truth of God's word that is applied timely and appropriately to the to the lives of others catch this this is super important the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace patience kindness goodness gentleness and so on and we'll talk more about some of these later but it's really important for us to know that, that um, we can't just become patient. We have to, um, patience is produced through the Spirit of God in our lives. And it says this at, that, at the end of this verse, it says, Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. It goes on to say, um, and Jesus says this in John 15, that if you abide in me and I in you as the branch, the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. Listen, you guys, if we're not abiding in Christ, we can't produce the fruit of the Spirit. And, and we could try as hard as we want to be as patient with people as we could possibly be. And we're going to be frustrated with our own efforts. But when we start to abide in Christ, when we start to really stay connected to Him through His Word and uh, through our time of prayer and through our commitment to love, we're going to find that patience just starts to overflow. And we get a chance to see the real picture of it. Now, it does require sacrifice. It does require self-denial. It does require me starting to decide, am I willing to give up my wants for a little time, for a time, or for permanently, in order to wait well? And doesn't, or am I willing to give up my own thoughts of what's important right now so that I can listen and I can show compassion and be slow to anger with those that I'm interacting with? Can we be patient? Absolutely. Jesus Christ has made it possible through his death, burial, and resurrection and the provision of his spirit. Are we willing to be patient? Well, it, it, it all comes down to whether or not we're willing to abide. Well, I hope this was an encouragement to you. Again, if it's not, then it's just bubbles that float around. But today is an opportunity for us to be able to continue to be transformed. I hope you have a great day, and we hope to see you soon.